Well, hello everybody. It's Deanna Fenton here. And I want to welcome you to this week's episode of Simple Steps to Online Success. Now, today's Uh, broadcast is going to be a little different than usual. I'm not going to demo some cool new toy or tool or uh, discuss platforms for online courses per se, but I want to talk to you a little bit about why I'm really passionate uh, about online entrepreneurs having control of their online platform and all their technology decisions. I know so many of you out there, just tech is the last thing that you ever want to talk about, deal with. It's a necessary evil. You just want to do whatever it is in your business that lights you up. And believe me, I totally understand that. And in a lot of cases, you don't always want to be or should be the person doing the the techie stuff but what i'm going to talk about today is why you really need to know enough to be in control of this because let's be honest those of you who are online course creators and membership site owners that's your business that would be like saying you open up a restaurant and you just want to totally abdicate the decision of where the restaurant is located or the structure of the building or the internal design of the building. Of course, we're not expecting you to build the restaurant, but you need to know enough to make the right decisions for you, your business and your future. Um, Gonna dive into our content and What we're going to talk about again is how do you become the CTO of your business and why should you be? So first of all, let me be clear, because I understand many people didn't work in a corporate environment or if they were in a corporate environment, they had nothing to do with the technology of that that company, obviously. But the CTO is your um, the chief technology officer, the CTO is the chief technology officer of a company. So you've got your CEO, you've got the chief technology officer who usually reports to the CEO, and you can have the chief marketing officer and chief happiness officer if, if it's a, something like Zappos. So it, it was always considered a C-level position. And that was the individual who was responsible for setting the strategy and managing the work that would help support the business in its uh, delivery of its mission. So it doesn't matter if it was a tech company, it doesn't matter if it was an e-commerce company, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a brick and mortar business. Someone needs to be in charge and the chief strategist to be able to accomplish the company's goals. Now, the truth is, so many of us are solopreneurs and we're hoping to build a team, but it's never too early to take on the responsibility of being the CEO. And those of you who've ever read The E-Myth, which is a fantastic book I highly recommend, and it's by Michael Gerber, he even talks about when you start out in business, you should create an organizational chart and add names to that organizational chart. And the truth is starting out, a lot of the times that's gonna be your name. Now, why I'm bringing this up is in an industry and in a business when there is a chief technology officer, that doesn't necessarily mean that person has to know every single Uh, detail about how to do the work. So a chief technology officer may not know how to code in a certain programming language. They may not know how to actually go in and fix a website. What they have to do is look at what the goals are of the organization and set the strategy on how the technology that's used in the company is going to 
help fulfill those goals and objectives. So the second thing I want to talk about is how the technology is the tool and should not be your stumbling block. But I completely understand. So many of you are really overwhelmed. And it was so funny. I saw a Facebook post recently where someone said, it never was so complicated before, but now there are so many options. Do I build this on WordPress? Do I use Kajabi? Do I use Kartra? Do I use Teachable? Blah, 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 blah. Insert name of most commonly recommended tool these days. So those kinds of things really become overwhelming. But what I want to focus on is be the strategist. And to coin the term from Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth, don't be the technician. You have to put on your corporate strategy hat, your chief, uh, your CEO or chief technology officer hat and say, what is it I want to accomplish? What is the end goal and what can I do right now to move myself forward? Now, when I say this again, you know what your goals are for your business. You know whether it is you're going to create a course, um, you're trying to sell a course, you want to sell it through webinars, you want to um, create a membership on the back end of that course. Any of these things, really, really, I just focus on get it all down, get it out of your head and get it on a piece of paper. I know you'll be shocked. Old school. I like paper. I like I like my mechanical pencil and graph paper and I sketch things out. And part of that is being able to control your platform decisions. What do I mean by that? I've seen because a lot of my clients were people that um, and I'm talking about in the WordPress development part of the business, they were local business owners that knew nothing. I mean, they weren't like many of you are at least immersed enough in the online world that you're getting, frankly, you're getting bombarded with all these different choices. But most of the people that I used to work with were brick and mortar and they weren't part of this world. So what would happen is because they didn't have the exposure, they didn't have a network to to ask too many people, you know, what are you using for this or what are you using for that or what what do you think I should use, which can be a rabbit hole, by the way. Um, they would often completely abdicate the decision of tech platform to whatever vendor came along. Now, let me tell you why that's dangerous. That's really dangerous because sometimes that person, unfortunately, kind of sells that they know more than they do or that they can do all things and they can't necessarily do that. They might be able to do something really, really well, like I could build a WordPress website, right? But then maybe that person doesn't know enough about SEO to really be able to help a local business get found. So it's understanding that not every vendor and provider has an overall marketing um, exposure to make recommendations or choose a platform for you that is going to work for you in the long term and that's going to integrate with other things. Beginning with the end in mind, exactly what I talked about sketching out, you know, my goal is I'm going to create a course. I'm going to sell it using webinars. Um, I want to have a course or excuse me, a membership on the back end. Sketch all that stuff out and then just really kind of focus on. And, and I always like to say this is you kind of flip it because you have to look at what's the first thing I need to do. Well, perhaps the first thing is deciding on the platform, but because you have sketched it out, what your long term goals are, it's going to really help you. And I know so many people right now are really hung up and really um, concerned or or stressing, like I said, those questions, which platform this and this and this and this. If you start small, you can always move. 
And I'm not going to promise you it's going to be without hiccups, but it's so much better to move from small and simple to larger and more complex than make a big complex choice that suddenly doesn't work for you. And then you've got to try and regroup. And, and what happens for most of us is we see the Amy Porter Fields and the Marie Forleo's and we see their fabulous websites and we see their amazing um, course platforms that they've got. But go back and look. You can go back and look at people's websites from when they first started because this Wayback Machine actually caches copies, makes copies of these websites and and you could go back in time and see what the websites used to look like and you're going to see they didn't start out with all this fancy stuff quite honestly of course it's, it's a lot easier for us now because back then the technology wasn't as as great and there wasn't that much of a focus on branding and and um, user interface and all that kind of stuff but you could go back and see you can just start small and test your concept before you make a lot of decisions. Now, having said that, I'm gonna kind of contradict what I'm saying, but again, only after you start small and you test and you figure out what's gonna work for you. Um, and this comment, this uh, quote is attributed to both Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins. So Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins always said success leaves clues. And what that means is it is really fascinating for me as somebody who's so immersed in the technology of marketing is to see what some of the major players in the industry are using right now. But if you look at the people that have built seven figure businesses that are using some of these other tools like Kajabi out there, um, it's amazing. I mean, Brendan Burchard, James Wedmore, Amy Porterfield, they have all put their course materials on Kajabi and they're using not not all of them, but many of them are using um, the landing pages or the, the opt in forms and those kinds of things. Now, they also let's be honest, they've created a business and an infrastructure that they have the budget that they can also utilize other third party tools with those things. They don't have to use the, all the uh, tools that are in that learning management system like Kajabi. So my final point really is that knowledge means power. And just like Sue, who had the fitness studio and soon to be her online fitness membership, she just wants to know enough so that she can decide and have control of what her decisions are about her marketing and her technology, and then go out and hire the right people to be able to execute it or maintain it after she's started. And my goal, as I said before, is for you to be in charge. You are going to be the CEO. You're the CEO of your business. You're the CEO of your life. You can make the plans. You can set the strategies and then you can figure out the way to build from there. And that's why being the CTO, and I would say for the most part, all of you are always gonna be the CTO, even if you're not the one doing the work, because you should be the one that is staying on top of these things and at least understanding changes in the marketing world, in the industry, so that you can take a tech team to help execute your vision and stay on top of things and, and stay relevant and current with everything that's going on. And but with that, I will say goodbye for this, this week and join me next Thursday at 12 noon Pacific time. And we will have another episode of Simple Steps to Online Success. I hope to see you in the group very soon and take care, have a fabulous weekend. Bye-bye.